I've done a lot of 3D printing. Whether it be work, personal projects for your resume, or starting a business, it's a very important skill to have and it'll bring you very far. I'm gonna be going over things I wish I knew before I started 3D printing, such as tools to have, software to learn, and just how to be prepared. So first let's get started on the software. CAD modeling software is such a powerful tool that even if you don't 3D print or fabricate anything with it, it can still be extremely useful for creating models and just designing how you want something to look in real life. And along with that, you can also make animations, renderings, and anything to really demonstrate what your product will look like in the future. Also, if you're just building it out of something such as cardboard, wood, or plastic. There's many different softwares you can use to actually create 3D models. Some of them are better than others. Some of them are more focused towards engineering. Some are more focused to animation and simulation. And I'll be listing off a few of those right now. The CAD software I've experienced using with is Fusion 360 and anything really AutoCAD. And then Onshape. Onshape is also a CAD software, but it's based on your web page. Other popular ones include SolidWorks, which is used for a lot of engineering, such as larger scale projects. One, the reason someone might want to use Fusion 360 over SolidWorks is because Fusion 360 is just prettier. SolidWorks is really better for large products, and if you need to simulate something such as like a car or rockets and how all the parts fit together. Fusion 360 is perfect for a hobbyist, and they have a hobbyist license for students, and that's actually the reason, the main reason I'm using it. Looking back on this, I left some stuff out. The reason I use Fusion 360 is because I have a Mac. SolidWorks is not available on my Mac. They also have a student license, which is very useful for me, as I am a student and I get it for free. Another reason I use Fusion 360 is it's very intuitive, has a pretty UI, and it looks very good, along with just it has a lot of capabilities all packed into one piece of software. For simulation animation, I have experience with Fusion 360's animation and simulation software and Blender. Blender is really good for any animation and rendering of products, but they fall short when it comes to actually designing and creating something with dimensions. So Blender is good for stuff such as fabric like this. This is a NASA fabric and little guys like this where scale doesn't really matter. And you don't have dimensions. But when you have something that's dependent on dimensions, such as this pen plotter I have, Blender doesn't do too well. You might be asking, Owen, oh, how do you make such amazing, beautiful designs in Fusion 360? You must have like an incredible gaming setup or some really cool key binds. Well, I actually prefer to use my trackpad as I don't have to carry a mouse with me around. I want to, I can just CAD anywhere on the go. I don't have to bring a mouse with me. And I really just use the default keybinds. I've gotten good with it. And you really don't need any fancy setup. I just use my laptop. I really don't use any other computer. Firstly, choosing a good 3D printer is very important. Reliability, easy to maintain, and overall cost. This one right here is the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. I found this one in my backyard. I'm not sure if it came with the house or maybe it grew back here, but I highly recommend it. It works very well. And for only $200, you can't go wrong with it. I haven't had to do much maintenance on it and I've had it for about a year and a half right now. And I use it, I say I print once a week. It has a 225 by 225 print bed. I'm not sure what the height is. I can put that right there, but prints uh, perfectly the right size I want. I don't really need anything bigger. And it takes uh, all different types of filaments TPU, PLA. Mostly I do PLA because of um, the needs I need for it. The way you get your files onto this printer is through something called a slicer. Here we are on a slicer. This one is specifically called Kira. A slicer is for taking the model that you either downloaded or created and turning it into instructions for the 3D printer to print. Slicers also control different attributes such as support and infill and determine the orientation that you will print. Changing these factors will increase or decrease the print time. After slicing, it'll give you estimated time and then you can export this to your printer where we can then print it. So there are two common types of printer. This one right here is an FDM, which is Fused Deposition Modeling. What this means is that each layer is placed one at a time. So first, first layer, and then this whole apparatus will move up, print the second layer, and then little by little, it'll print the whole object. There's another type called SLA, which you might also see, which uses a resin and lights. This is called stereolithography something, but what it does is it uses resin and it cures it with light. The reason I did not get an SLA one is because the resin seems hard to work with as it's a liquid and it can be messy and hazardous. FDM printing though, um, it's the material is solid at the top. As you can see, it's a reel of plastic. This one is specifically PLA. 
PLA is made from recycled um, biodegradable stuff like corn or other oils and polymers. So FDM printer like this one, what they do is they melt the plastic that comes from up here and down through a nozzle and that's deposited onto the build plate. The build plate is this silver area you see right here. What's special about it is it's heated from the bottom and this will allow the material that is being deposited to stick well and have a firm grasp so it doesn't fall off when moving around stuff like this. Okay, here we have our completed print. As you can see, it's all done printing and the screen even tells us that the print is done. So we remove the build plate. The build plate is magnetically adhered to this base right here and then it's a flexible metal. So what we can do is simply bend it and then the part will come off. And there we go. So if we look at this part, you'll notice that it has a bunch of plastic around it. This is called a brim. Brims are used to ensure bed adhesion is better as it'll allow the part to adhere to the bed better and will stop it from moving around. As you can see from printing outside, you get little stuff like dirt and leaves. The reason I do print outside is because 3D printers actually produce harmful chemicals that may cause lung issues if they're not filtered properly on the inside. I'm done with my print. There's a little power button on the side that I flick off just to ensure that the printer is okay when I leave the room. So with my prints, I usually select this option called a skirt. What a skirt does is it prints a small, one layer thin piece around the print. And this helps keep the print in place when printing so that it doesn't shift off the build plate. I haven't had any failed prints when I use these and they're really just, it doesn't use much material and it's super easy to remove. This is what we just printed outside. And yeah, it just peels off and then it leaves a little bit of a rough edge. So you can just sand that down, super easy. Um, it's just a good thing to know as it'll improve your print quality and just the success of your print. Another thing I learned, get white filament. White filament is excellent because you can paint over it, just like how I had my love letter project where I painted this heart red and the text over it red, and it gave you this cool effect where it looks like it's actually two prints. Don't look at that part, but it's actually just painted over. <music> There's different hardware people use with 3D printing. A very common one is just nuts and bolts in general. This one, they're excellent. There's a ton of them, but the dividers are too short, so all the screws get mixed up, so there's not really a point in having this box. You might as well just have like a Ziploc bag with all the screws and nuts in it, but get these. These are awesome. You can make many multi-piece parts. You can also attach components such as motors and sensors to your prints, and it just really excels that. Another important tool I found it was like one of these little mini screwdriver kits. I use these a lot for these nuts and bolts right here, but also just for screws in general and modifying electronics. Two more tools that are extremely necessary for processing and designing prints are calipers. What calipers are, they have a screen right here. And this will tell you the distance between two objects. So like, let's test it on my finger. My finger is 15 millimeters in diameter. This would be useful if you have something such as, um, say this case, I measure it, I wanna create a case for my case, and now I have the dimension right here. I recommend getting the digital ones. I can't even read the analog ones because it's like a dial and it's stupid, but um, these ones are great. I got them online, super cheap. I use them all the time for my projects. And then I recommend some like pliers like these. I'm not sure the exact name. I'll put it somewhere on the screen. But these are good because they have a lot of leverage. As you can see, the handle's huge and this little tiny piece is, you know, tiny. So it will allow you to rip off supports and any other piece of the print that comes and if you need to make modifications in general. For these bolts that I recommend, it's just a set of assorted metric size bolts. And by that, I mean, for example, it has M1, Okay, it doesn't have M1. For example, it has M2, M3, M4, and M5 bolts. This M size bolt stands for the diameter of the threads. So when I have the diameter of the thread, it's really easy. I don't have to measure it every time. And unfortunately, these are not sorted. They like disperse. But the good thing about these M bolts is that metric is used a lot in CAD. And it really just makes models easier because most models do come in metric when you look at their data sheets. So sticking to metric is useful. It's not good for me as a, someone who lives in the United States 
where a lot of stuff is in Imperial units. But yes, stick to metric units, I'd say, for bolts. Makes it easier, saves you some headache. I don't really use threaded inserts for my prints. Threaded inserts are good for things that you want to keep using over and over or that you want a stronger fit from a screw. Say I want to print this M5 bolt into a print that holds a motor to something. What I do is I just take, okay, this is an M5, this is an M4. Um, I'll say that the hole is an M4 and then squeeze this M5 into that hole. What it'll do is it'll cause a friction fit between the hole in here and it'll be extremely strong into that hole. The issue is if you unscrew stuff and put it back in a lot, it does degrade the hole and causing issues with long-term reliability. But if you only need to screw it in once, just do a hole. You don't need to put the insert in and it saves you some time. One more tool that's super useful, sandpaper. It's not really a tool, it's just like some sand glued to some paper, but extremely useful for prints, especially when you're taking the skirt off or you have sharp corners and you wanna file them down, just make them smooth, makes your prints look better, and it's a great tool. So yeah, that's the video. Um, I was on spring break, that's why I changed locations a bunch of different times, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I might in the future just show a whole process where I actually start with a product, and then CAD it, 3D print it out, do all the wiring, all of this. Might put it on live stream, have no idea, but uh, let me know what you guys think, and thanks for watching. I've done a lot of 3D printing. Whether it be 